Yeah, today's project we saw is all the, the new Type 9 barrier rail that they're putting in, the glare screen rail, which is was a little tougher barrier to start with because it's the standard height is fi uh, 36 inches and we're doing the glare screen type, which is 56 inches. And so for us as a new barrier slip form company, was a little bit tougher to start with, but, but we did it. And it, it, we've got about 15,000 lineal feet to do there and we're pouring about close to 400 feet a day right now. So, how wide is that at the base, do you know, Tim? It's about two foot at the base and about six inches at the top. And it's kind of a symmetrical design on yeah. both sides. Yeah, that's the new style, so that's why we bought the new mold. There's not a lot of guys, I'm sure other guys are going to get the mold, but we, we bought the, the new Type 9 variable height mold, so it'll actually go up a little bit taller than that. It'll go another three feet on top of that. On this project, do you have a, where you have the variance in the variable? Yeah, we do. But th this barrier here will probably will be maybe a little over six foot on this project. Oh yeah. Slip forming anything at all? Slip forming anything at all. So we actually, um, when we started thinking about it, we uh, went down with Gameco to uh, Phoenix and watched another contractor do some slip forming and. So I, I kind of felt like our guys, we do a lot of, I mean, all the work we do is all bridge work and hand forming, so no slip forming at all, but we felt like we could jump in and figure it out. And, and we've got a good group of guys, so, and you guys saw them today, they're very capable of doing this. So, I mean, we're into our third, fourth week of it, and, and we're doing, everything we've poured is acceptable, and it, it could be a little bit better, but it, it's getting there day by day, so. Where did yeah. you find your operator? The, the operator that's running Argameco right now is, is Manuel Teo. And uh, he's just one of our bridge foremans that's been with us for, he's worked with me 10 plus years. So we just converted him from a, from a carpenter foreman to running, our, running the Gameco. And he just really? jumped, jumped right into it. Went to your school up in Iowa and, and then, uh, then I took him down to Phoenix and he watched the guys run their machine in Phoenix. And, he jumped did. right in, huh? Jumped right in. Yeah, exactly. What is there anything in particular that you like about the Commander Three? Um, kind of tough when it's your first time. It, 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 <laughs> you, you, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, the things we, we haven't had any problems really. The the only thing we had was we changed. We did modify the mold a little bit um, inside the mold where the flutes come through that hold the rebar. We, there was too much concrete built up on there. So we boxed in the, the flutes there with some steel plating and, and that seemed to help. So that, that's the only modification we've had that we thought we could try and do and, and it worked. And that was to expedite the cleaning, wasn't it? That was to expedite the cleaning because we're, we're kind of held up because we can pour like about a three to 400 foot stretch. Then we have to stop, clean the machine and then go around the light pole obstruction and then start again. So that cleanup time was taken too long. So that's why we, in, we encased all the flutes with a steel plating. With us, um, I mean, it's a little gutsy for us because we hadn't done it at all. And um, the best advice I could give you was you better have a steady crew that's been with you a long time that knows how to finish concrete. You know, our guys have done, we mostly do vertical work and, and we do some flat work a little bit, but we have good finishers and good people. And it, it starts with that crew that's out there, really. Mixed design's pretty important. Yeah, you gotta have that low slump, half inch slump, and, and you gotta have a good ready mix supplier. And, and most of the, you know, you gotta have that wet batch or central plant where it's not a dry batch and do the half inch slump but it, it's hard to get the consistency even with that it's sometimes you got to bring the trucks in and they just have to sit but it's it's pretty much all about that slump going in the machine and 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 that's back to the experience with the guys so the guys understand what kind of slump they got to pour with so they if that slump is too wet they'll uh they'll let the truck set for a little while or or they'll be calling dispatch and getting that corrected. Yeah, you have to be real careful. Yeah, there's uh, 11 horizontals in that glare screen concrete. So you have to keep that feeding into the machine and you, and you got to keep it propped up. It can't be, it can't be sloughing because it, it tries to pull inside the barrier, the, the pieces you've poured. So we're pretty good about staging 
and just propping up the rebar where it's feeding in. And then we, we have one guy standing there the whole time watching the rebar go in, make sure when the bars are spliced that they don't catch anywhere. So that's, that's some of the things that uh, we saw when we went down to Phoenix. So with the barrier and you don't see a lot of people, you know, a lot of people can do it. But, I mean, can you do it right, you know, and everybody's looking at the top. The top's got to be good, and it's got to line up good, and it's, it's tough product to put out. So if you can put it out, there's, there's not a lot of people who can put out a good product. You know, I, I've, seen, I've seen good and I've seen bad with it, you know. Like I said, it's, it's the guys out there, too. You just can't hire those guys anywhere, you know, so they, they, they really are good.